And welcome to the second round of the National Invitation Tournament. Where else would you rather be on St. Patrick's Day than beautiful South Bend, Indiana? Everybody wearing green. Here we go, Ed. Here we go. It's St. Patty's Day. That's what I'm talking about. There we go. And away we go. Notre Dame, the number one seed, squaring off with Penn State. The four seed, the winner, will advance to face Oregon or Marquette here in the National Invitation Tournament. That game coming up tomorrow over on ESPN2. Oh, great to have you along, as always. Brick Weisbrod, Roy Philpott, Notre Dame, the one seed, just missed the big dance, but now gaining health and feeling pretty good about things. Yeah, this has been a great week of practice, according to Mike Bray. He said this team feels like they're in November mode right now, so very fresh with their eyes set on New York City. Mike Bray, 18th season, 502 career victories. And here in the NIT, experimental rules in play, including quarters, the quarter system, 10-minute quarters, just like the women's game. Wider lane, deeper three-point arc, Brooke. And for the most part, it sounds like most coaches, players, like the rule changes. I think they've really adapted well to these changes. We want more offense. We want more flow in the game of basketball. And just like the ladies, the quarter system in the men's game will prove results. More scoring, less fouls, less game time. It's good for everybody. I'm a big proponent. First look at Tony Carr. First team all Big Ten, second leading scorer in the conference. And by many accounts, a draftable NBA prospect, perhaps as soon as this summer. Quick triple. Gardner off the mark. Fresh 30 now for Carr. Indy Lions had a nice run in the Big Ten tournament. End up losing to Purdue. First possession now for Notre Dame. Notre Dame going to work their offense methodically, getting the best shot they can, of course, looking for number 35, Bonzi Colson. Him back in the lineup, being healthy after his foot injury. Farrell with his ankle injury. This Irish club, they have a new chance at a second life here in postseason. Reeves with the steal. And in transition, no whistle, tapped out. Back to Notre Dame. Pat Chambers here, number seven, a Philadelphia native. We asked him a couple of hours ago, this game feels like it perhaps is more important for your team given what he's trying to build. Penn State, a team, a program trying to find its tradition and a run to Madison Square Garden would certainly be a nice step in a positive direction. Well, he said, listen, this program has not played on March 17th in a long time. So it's a huge step you know, to get the program you know, at a point where it's competitive for a Big Ten championship, getting to the NCAA tournament. This is a place to start. Would be a huge win for the Nittany Lions to get it on this floor. Not an easy place for people to come in and win at Purcell Pavilion. Gibbs stepping out of bounds. Of course, the Big Ten tournament at the world's most famous arena some two weeks ago. A long hiatus. As Gardner, another quick trigger, comes up short. Coles in the board. Colson missing those 15 games proved to be detrimental in Notre Dame's postseason resume. And like Carr, also a draftable prospect later this summer off the steal and the flush. Lamar Stevens connects. Both teams to me kind of feeling this game out instead of starting a downhill playing aggressive. A big motto of this Notre Dame team and one that Bonzi Colson has adopted is attack the chin. You know, in a game like this, a good start, very critical. Good exchange that time, but a block. Harris snuck in there for the last second rejection. Here's Fluger. Attack the chin. That sounds pretty intense. Hey, Mike Bray likes these guys that think like boxers. I like it. Olsen going to work. Always crafty. Draws the contact. And three throws up coming as Stevens picks up his first. Here's a look at Coach Bray. Did a nice job motivating this team in NIT play, which is not always the easiest thing to do. He gave a lot of compliments to his seniors. He said, our guys, you know, Colson, Farrell, Gebbin, Austin Torres, these guys have carried the load. They've understood you know, the bigger picture and what this means. It's not, don't just say we got to give up because we didn't get into the big dance. Well, you still have a chance to have a national championship and their attitudes all season long, they've been resilient. The injuries, the inconsistency in lineups. That's a very difficult thing to manage. So imagine this Notre Dame team with Bonzi Colson not having missed the stretch he did, Farrell his five games, how dangerous this team would be. Yeah. 
Pat Chambers said it best. If he was healthy, we wouldn't be here playing at Notre Dame today. Correct. Now Penn State also without the services of Nas Bostic. He's been suspended for a violation of team rules. So Coach Chambers losing a little depth off of his bench. Stevens back to work and has four in the early going. Like the way Lamar Stevens has started this game, he scored a double figure six of their last seven games, coming on strong. In the Big Ten tournament, he was 15 against Ohio State, 14 against Purdue. On his offense, especially when you know, Tony Carr goes cold against Temple, who else is going to step up? Yeah, Carr coming off just a two-point performance against the Owls in that first round win. Game that Penn State had to rally late to be able to survive. Patrick Chambers calling it a rock fight, which was <laughs> the deep Perfectly analysis that we love. Described. I love it. It was a rock fight, a defensive slugfest, if you will. Always energetic on the sidelines. So much fun to watch. Doing it the right way at Penn State as well. Carr, patient, late whistle. Foul will be against Fluger, his first. That's a good way to break out of a one-game slump. I would argue, too, to get to the line early the, the following contest. And I like the action out top. The weave gives the guard some movement. You, you catch it, you turn that corner, you find the defense slipping. And Penn State's done a good job of going at the basket every single possession. Are telling reporters in Happy Valley this week he's got a decision to make for the upcoming NBA draft. He's a sophomore out of Philadelphia, second leading scorer in the Big Ten. One for 12 from the floor against the Owls in that first round win. Good start here. What I liked about his game, though, he had six rebounds, five assists, a block, and a steal. So, yes, he didn't shoot well, one for 12, 0 for 4 from three, but didn't see any change in his body language, how hard he played, and he contributed in other areas. And, hey, here they are. They got the win. For Dame in search of its first made field goal, rejected, and again, it's Hera. Tapped out, 10 to shoot for the Fighting Irish. And for the first time, Julian Moore has played in a school record 138 games now. That's 44 in gray as Hera checks out. Farrell, the senior, sharpshooter. Now Gibbs Jr., the floater. Too strong, rebound claimed by Wheeler. Penn State, the aggressor here in the early going, and a turnover. Now the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One continues today at 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific over on ESPN2 with more first-round action. Make sure you check your local listings for the games in your area. And remember that all games streaming live are on the ESPN app. Six to one, Penn State. Notre Dame 0 for 3 from the floor to start this one. Colson will try to change it. And back to the line. Well, the Penn State interior defense has been tough. And you, know, you mentioned the women's tournament. We've seen some exciting games so far. We had a great one down to the wire in overtime last night between South Dakota State University and Villanova. And I just got a little alert here on my watch that says, number one, UConn sets a women division one record with 94 points in the first half. That's just sick. That's unbelievable. That's sick. We've seen a 16 upset, a one last night at the men's tournament. Wow, this is unbelievable. Six to three. <laughs> 94 points. Didn't you get something if you get 100 points, free Big Mac or pizza or something? I think so. Gino's angry, and his team is playing <laughs> angry, so look out. Ooh. Contact, no whistle. Colson hit the deck. Carr keeps the play alive. Here's Reeves for three. And we'll head to the other end. Only four minutes into our first quarter in these NIT experimental, uh, experimental rule changes. You've been a big proponent of the quarter system. I mean, college basketball on the men's side, the only sport on the planet that operates with the two 20-minute halves. I think you and I call a lot of women's games, and 
we've seen the production levels rise. Not only scoring is up, fouls are down, game time is down. And I did talk with a bunch of men's coaches a couple years ago just to ask, hey, how do you feel about it? What do you think? And honestly, I got a lot of resistance. And now I think we were able to experiment in a place like the NIT. Good job by Penn State, continuing to take it to the rim. Carr still off the mark. But you give a chance for guys to actually see what it feels like. And you're widening the lane, you're creating more movement. I am all for it, let's do it. College men's basketball is the only game in the world to not have four quarters. Let's just go ahead and make the game the same all the way down. Stevens in, Hera out for Penn State. Arnie Gebbin checking back in for the Fighting Irish. Dressed in their green uniforms today, which are ultra sharp. You gotta do it. They're pretty good. Car down low off the inbounds. And we'll shoot two again, so Tony Carr. Penn State aggressive as Pfluger picks up his set. That was too easy of an inbound pass for Penn State. Notre Dame did enough to try to bother that entry pass in the car. He's got good elevation, though. Great hands, eye coordination to catch that and go up in traffic. Carr, two points against Temple, already three here on the road against Notre Dame. Back in as well as Austin Torres. Stevens checks out for the Nittany Lions. A pair of 20 win programs on display today. Two teams motivated to be in this tournament. Penn State out to an 8 to 3 advantage. And it's in. Fighting Irish still in search of their first field goal. And there it is off the glass. Nicely done by Fair. I love the jab step. And I love how well Matt Farrell uses it. And he's so good at minimizing his movement and maximizing the defense getting out of his way. Contested triple by Carr. Too strong. Rebound claimed by Joe Go. Sloppy possession again for the Fighting Irish. And a timeout on the floor after the foul. 8-5, to five, Penn State out in front here on St. Patrick's Day at the home of the Golden Domers. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by Chevy. Chevy has earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards for cars, trucks, and SUVs. And Progressive Insurance, your first-round pick for car insurance. Three-point advantage for Penn State on the road. Back inside Purcell Pavilion at the Joy Center. And Pat Chambers a bit upset with that last field foul call. Yeah, he really felt like Jamari Wheeler should not have been called for the foul there. And Jamari, even after the play, looked to be a little bit shaken up. Patrick Chambers did not want to let it go. Had to be sent back to his bench from his assistants. You know, fired up, no doubt. You know, postseason play, you want every bit of juice you can get. And if that's what it takes from his coach to inspire his guys, so be it. I mean, he's covering his mouth when he's talking. You know what's going <laughs> down there. Back to live action. Notre Dame just one field goal made thus far. Sounds good. I don't know. Gibbs with a bounce. TJ Gibbs first basket. And it's eight to seven. Well, happy St. Patrick's Day on a week that has ended with all kinds of upsets in college basketball. Three-pointer off the mark. Farrell skies for the rebound. And a chance for Notre Dame to claim the lead. Farrell launching. You had UMBC in your bracket, right? Of Over course. Virginia, just like everybody Retrievers, else. Retrievers, you know it. We were good boys last night. That was an amazing win. You just feel it. They, they played with such power, hitting those threes. And you saw Virginia, and their eyes getting bigger to say, okay, this, this could be for real, guys. First time in history we've seen a 16 over a one seed in the men's tournament. Previously 135 and 0, all net from the corner for Tony Carr. And it's 11 to 7. You can tell he feels so much more relaxed today and settling into his game. 
It's hard to believe. 19 points a game. He goes 1 for 12. It's a nice dish from Farrell. So good at breaking down the defense. And that is a guy that sees two and three passes ahead. I love what Mike Gray had to say about him being the ultimate quarterback for his team. Elbow jumper, short by Stevens. Tap down, it'll stay with Penn State. That Farrell getting it done. So good. You'll see Farrell here. He's going up against Jab Jamari Wheeler. Watch after he comes around this screen here, the jab step, putting Wheeler on skates. And as I mentioned, it's the little things, the little movements that can get you open in a basketball game. And Matt Farrell, he's gone from a limited minute type of player to an absolute hero here in program at this Notre Dame University. Big shots, big steals to win games. Part of a senior class that has won more games than any other senior class in Notre Dame history. 103 and counting. A legacy with him and Bonzi Colson. Certainly going to be remembered for a long time here in South Bend. Tony Carr, air ball. Farrell, Colson. Looney can't claim the rebound, Carr can. Stevens patient that time at the elbow and it pays off for the basket. He's got six. Penn State still finding shots in the paint to get. Notre Dame, trying to get their offense going, you can really feel a lot more movement. The ball doesn't get stuck when you can move it. Dribble less and pass more. Thirty remaining in our first quarter. Gibbs off the bounce, floater, no good. Rejected by Carr, sent out of bounds. It'll stay with Notre Dame. Catch every moment of the 2018 NCAA Women's Championship on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Fun time of year on both sides. As Mooney attacking the rim is hacked. Picks up his first personal, the junior out of Lithuania. Mooney, an interesting case study. Struggles at the line, made six three pointers at Duke this year. An outstanding shooter, but Brooke, you notice at the very top of that shot has a little hitch, and he's been working on his free throw shooting. It hasn't happened for him just yet. The two things I notice about his free throw the hitch that you mentioned, and also to me, it looks like his follow through. He points more toward the outside versus a straight on approach. I think sometimes that can have an effect on the flight of the ball, the rotation. You feel like you're shooting inside out. You're hitting six threes. How much do you really want to mess with your free throw form at that point, especially this late in the season? You know, tinker with it maybe in the off season and see if you can make it better. But now you don't want to mess with it. Then you're getting into your head about it. Ankle injury also set him back briefly. Notre Dame in its zone. Carr sends it outside to Gardner. That's his spot. And from downtown, Chef Gardner connects, hit two big triples in the comeback win against Temple. Yeah, his big shot late, tied it at 54, and that's his mom, Kim, in the stand, too. It was a key cog in their win. She said the players could actually hear her voice, and that they kind of soaked up her energy on the floor. Wait, mom was a cog in the victory. Oh, yeah. That's a first. <laughs> that's a first. Corner triple off the mark for Farrell. Tell me also she's a professional singer. Did she have a performance last night? She was in Philly last night. She had a five-song set. The three from Josh Reeves, the Nittany Lions. Feeling good. Kim's brought her muscle. Performed last night, gets up 5 a.m. on a plane to South Bend. That's how you do it. An 11 to 3 scoring bench in favor of Penn State. And there's Shep Gardner's father, who happens to sit on the opposite side of this venue <laughs> because mom is too demonstrative. She's talking too much, and he's more low-key. So Shep Sr. 
taking a different approach. That's right. He's kind of going with it with the quiet energy, saying it out there. Mom's the more vocal one of the family. <laughs> He's a singer. She should be. Yeah, I think that's pretty awesome. She actually got the fans into it the other night, too. You can all see if she was the only one standing for a while. Gardner, fan of the year right now at Penn State. Shot clock is off. What should be the final possession of our first quarter, and here's a steal. Gardner off to the races and connects with the easy bucket. And what a way to end the first quarter for the Nittany Lions on the road. Yeah, defense to offense is big. When you can get these kind of momentum buckets, especially at the end of quarters, oh, it's great. You come off a steal. Gardner, two more. He's ready to keep this thing rolling. Now it's time for Meaningful Returns, brought to you by TD Ameritrade and Tony Carbrook, one for 12 against Temple in the first round victory. Seven points in the first quarter so far today. You know, Patrick Chambers told us he felt a lot better coming into today's game. Didn't think that that performance was going to affect his performance today. And so far, not only he, but Penn State and the Lions have come here very aggressively and started strong. Irish looking for a response here. They'll get one inside from Gavin. Kevin has improved his play in his senior campaign, had 18 points in that win against Hampton in round one of the NIT. And a fun player to watch as he has improved over the course of his career out of Lithuania. 43 of his last 45 free throw attempts off the mark there. And Starting our second quarter, Penn State in control. Are you surprised by this start? A little bit. Yeah, I thought Notre Dame was going to come out with a little more pace to this game, but they've settled in. Matt Farrell has been the one to lead this team with kind of energy in that type of play. But Penn State's being more aggressive. They're getting good shots on the inside. They're staying patient, and they're limiting Notre Dame on the boards. A little shake and bake from Gardner. Offensive rebound, no whistle. Colson controls on the attempted putback. Colson three points in that first quarter. Joko from the corner comes up short. Colson on the offensive glass. And Notre Dame missing point blank opportunity. 17 to shoot as the possession continues. I think if you're Mike Ray, you'd like to see more than one pass to one shot in your offense. Work it inside a bit. Work with that screen and roll. I think Gebbin and Farrell off that pick and pop is a dangerous option for the Irish. Lions playing with more of a sense of urgency so far. Gardner. And a foul inside on the attempted rebound against Notre Dame and Von C. Colson. And what a job he's done in his career now elevating himself in the record books. Eight most rebounds in school history. It's pretty incredible to see him closing in on 900. He's got over 1,600 points, 150 blocks for his career. Talk about a complete all-around versatile asset to your team. That is Bonzi Colson. The only thing bigger than his game is personality. It's going to be a block. No Gibbs trying to take a charge in position. Not going to get the call. I think even Tony Carr thought that was going to be an offensive foul. Elbow chest. Grazing of the elbow here. Watch Carr's right elbow. The officials will take another look at this one. Veteran officiating crew led by Wally Witecki, Nathan Farrell, Courtney Green. Well, from our vantage point, it looked like it was an offensive foul initially. We'll take one more look. Some gives. Into position, and it's the right elbow that comes across there. Is there clear contact with the face of Gibbs? It looks like he brushes against his chin maybe twice. Right. Nice 
90 seconds into our second quarter a review and this one may take an extended period of time to try to sort through. Now the slow start for the Fighting Irish from the field just four of 17 from the floor. There's been some open looks. Closer look between Carr and Gibbs. And now we'll get the official ruling. Courtney Stevens walking over. So no flagrant foul. 21 to 12 ball game. And an interesting decision there by this officiating yeah, group. You, you know, you'd think with the evidence that was there, it was definitely elbow contact, but they will keep only the foul on Notre Dame and Gibbs. And I'm not sure I'm in total agreement with that one, where I think there was some space at least to, you know, to review the elbow. I mean, you, you concentrate on that so much. Courtney Stevens indicating the cylinder rule where right. he's within his allowed space. Turn around, jump hook is short as Stevens. And that one partially rejected. Let's see if that sparks this Notre Dame team. You know, had it been a little more intense, I think they would have come away with a different ruling. It's, it was right on that line of incidental contact. Intentional definitely wasn't there. So I think that's, at the end of the day, the right call by the officials. Like it so much. Here's Stevens in transition. Notre Dame just trying to find a way to generate some offense. And that's one way to do it. Devin down low. The senior will put the crowd on its feet. Farrell weaving, attacking, and an offensive foul. Wow. Definitely have to take another look at this one. Keep your eye on the left arm of Farrell. That's what the official, official, official crew concentrating on here. He did extend it. Oh, my goodness. That's a bang, bang play right there, Roy. And I don't know if that would constitute an offensive foul. If I'm blowing the whistle there. I get that they saw it, he extended the arm. To me, that's not enough. That's not enough for me to call the offensive foul. And Harrell won that pillow fight in that sequence. harrell <laughs> has been in the weight room, clearly. Twenty-one to fourteen. Three minutes into the second quarter. This crowd getting feisty on St. Patrick's Day. the screen for Carr outside an open look from downtown Reeves misses. They feel the Irish taking more control of the pace, spreading the floor, doing a good job of making Penn State's defenders work. There wasn't a lot of movement early on in this game, right? It was one pass, one shot. And you start to feel it from the Irish. Better movement, better assist game. This is what they do. They share the ball. Bonzi Colson can lead the break. He's going to look up the floor. Good cutting, good ball movement. Let's dribble more passing. Yes, please. In South Bend, second round of the NIT in Penn State, a seven point lead. A line and a leprechaun with the dance off. NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship second round continues today. Over on CBS, TBS, and TNT for matchups and game times, go to NCAA.com. But a wild start to the tournament, as you would expect, chaos. That's what we say every year. This is going to be the wildest tournament that we've ever seen. And tell you what, this year that may actually be the case with a 16 over a 1 and a couple of 13 seeds advancing. Marshall 
course, you documented all of this in your bracket some three days ago, I'm sure. You know, we try our best to be prepared and, and make predictions and tell you what trends are happening, and sometimes we're right. This is the best time of year to be wrong. I love it. There's nothing better than filling out a bracket and having the unexpected happen. The 16 over the one. The more drama, the better. Reeves with the three-pointer. Four minutes into our second quarter, using these experimental rules in the NIT. And a foul as Wheeler tried to fight through the screen. That's his second personal. Once you get the five team fouls in any quarter, two free throws automatic. So it's like the women's game. There's no one and one. And that was a point that some coaches expressed to me about they would like to have that one and one still, uh, even with four quarters. You know, trying to penalize teams, but at the same time, you can get to five fouls quickly if you're a team that likes to shoot free throws, like Buzz Williams at Virginia Tech. That's what he told me. He wants the one and one. And no call from Farrell there. He's confused, waiting to get back up, waiting for the whistle to get blown. Gardner launching short. To cap off that point, if you're an aggressive team, you're going to get to the free throw line no matter what. We'll take another look at this play from Farrell on the drive. Cutting through the heart of the defense. There's a foul somewhere there. No, that's no call. I like it. Farrell can't buy a whistle thus far unless it's against him. Farrell was a little off balance. Chest not facing the rim. The control, and that's what the Irish have to do. They have to get in control of the flow and tempo of their offense. Penn State doing a good job of chopping that up. Four to shoot, Gibbs launching, contact. And three throws coming up for T.J. Gibbs, a sophomore from Jersey. So Goulas picks up the personal one. Not a good play here if you're a fan of the Nittany Lions. But a great screen with elevation from T.J. Gibbs. And I like the screen Austin Torres sent. Get him open. That's so important. Your big guys, you know, they got to stand still and give your guard some room to move. I think they need to get more into the two-man game right now. You know, either with Torres or Gavin, when he's in the game, how well he moves. He takes powerful steps. Gives it 83% at the line this year. Arrow checking back in. Gula out. And Mooney also back on the floor for Notre Dame. Way through our second quarter. Notre Dame trying to battle back. Fighting Irish have not led in this one here at home. Are thinking about it. Now gives it up. Reeves double teamed and kicked out by Colson. NCAA tournament aspirations. Notre Dame was ranked inside the top 10 this year when the injury bug hit. How bad do you want it? And for Penn State, a team that's got a lot of sophomores, you think about it. Deep run in this tournament, pays dividends later on in the coming seasons as a foul to be called against the Fighting Irish. Well, hey, you got to think about it like this. You're playing for a national championship right now, and it's in Madison Square Garden. The bright lights are there. Notre Dame is a team that loves to perform. They've got a lot of film, television, and theater majors. This is right up their alley. And for Penn State, trying to climb back into it. Again, Patrick Chambers saying, hey, I'm looking at my watch. It's March 17th. It's been a long time since we've played on a day like this. He's done a terrific job of getting this program back to a point where you're even talking about postseason play. Free throws by Hera. Here comes Matt Farrell. Penn State now dropping back into its own look. Colson stop and pop. All net. Trying to figure out who Bonsi Colson reminds us of. I mentioned to you yesterday, could he be a Draymond Green type player? 
We asked him about it. Do you try to pattern your game after any particular player in the association? Lo and behold, Draymond Green, here's his steal, right on cue. Yeah, I think his eyes lit up when you asked him that question because you really can't see it in his game. I mean, he's he's demonstrative like Draymond is. He adds a lot of different elements. Good job by Gibbs to keep his composure. Break, we call a timeout, save that possession. Good job. Well, Colson called the timeout. And I don't know that he's as big as Draymond Green. He's not as tall, but the personality is similar. And he's so crafty. When I think of Draymond Green, he's going to irritate you defensively. He's going to get in your head if he can. Colson maybe not quite like that, but crafty around the rim as an undersized post player. And so I think for Bonzi Colson, as he prepares for the draft, he's going to get in front of these NBA scouts. He's going to impress them in the interview process. And then the film doesn't lie. He finds ways to generate buckets. And that's what it's all about at the next level. 20 and 10, and you have a guy that can be disruptive and a great chemistry player. So who's not going to want that on their team? You know, and it is a matter of getting his jump shot better, getting stronger, leaner, faster, all of those things that are requirements for the association, yes. Out of the Notre Dame timeout. Penn State lead is seven. Under four to go in our first half. Winner of this game will get the winner of Oregon and Marquette. It's Notre Dame, they'll host that quarterfinal contest on Tuesday. It's another good thing about the National Invitation Tournament, get a chance to play some home games in postseason play, which can be very nice for your seniors, as Colson was fouled on the attempted putback. We get a packed weekend. Wins number one seed. The Irish playing for a spot in the Sweet 16 tomorrow. They'll play Villanova. Couple lacrosse games going on this weekend as well. So a busy weekend here in South Bend. And the Virginia lacrosse team staying at our hotel. Had the unfortunate circumstance earlier this morning, Ooh. standing at the elevator looking at a young man, and I said, you know what? Did you watch that game last night as Pfluger's being tended to? And he said, yeah, I watched it. Then he turned around. And he's got his Virginia lacrosse shirt on. I said, brother. Did your stomach drop? I'm sorry. I felt bad. I felt bad. He said, yeah, we watched it. It was awful as Virginia was upset as a one seed. Oof. Crowd on its feet. Stevens. Dig. Hera couldn't connect. You got to feed Polson on this play. Nine to shoot Gibbs. Wild shot, but gets it back. Farrell. Elbow jumper is good. And a one possession game here in South Bend. The shot clock car. Mooney clears. A great time for the Irish to find a run here. At the end of the second quarter. You could feel them get bigger on defense, started extending their range, forcing Penn State into tough shots. I still think the ball needs to go into the hands of Colson. He's got to be your scorer here. Farrell. Trying to tie it up. Tapped out. It'll be Notre Dame basketball when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by Chase. Make more of what's yours. Matt, thank you very much. Back to live action here in South Bend. Second round of the NIT continues and Notre Dame trailing the entire first half. A chance to tie it perhaps with a shot from downtown on this possession. 
Brooke Weisbro, Roy Philpott, you had a chance to listen in on Mike Bray's huddle in that last time out. What do you have to say? Well, he likes the fact that Notre Dame had three straight stops three times. He calls them kills, so very excited about that. He also pointed out that he wants his guys to keep driving. And Bonzi Colson and John Mooney, he said specifically, I need you guys to craft the offensive glass. So there was a lot of focus in the first half of that timeout about defense, and then putting the ball on the floor, attacking the chin. Notre Dame, that's what they do best. I still need clarification on that because it sounds intimidating. You're just going after somebody. Right, well, yeah, you've got to be tough in a game like this. And right. It is a boxing match. And actually, I love how Mike Bray kind of trains these guys to think under those turns. Right next to the pit downstairs, the practice pit, is the boxing gym. Whoa! Oh, rejected out of nowhere by Colson. And they're going to say count the basket. Lonzi Colson has been criticized at times by his own coaching staff for the lack of blocks or rejections, but the numbers say something different. A little help side defense. Lonzi wants to be known as a shot blocker, and the coaching staff says not until you come from the weak side and block a shot. Example A, get there just a half step sooner with the goaltending. He's top Ooh. 10 all time in blocks at Notre Dame. <laughs> he, he gets after it defensively. Put some respect on my block shot, shot name. Under a minute to play in our first half. Skip pass, Mooney, that's his spot. Can't connect, and the shot clock and game clock virtually identical for Penn State. Pat Chambers going to utilize a timeout. Now the winner of this contest, and the top seed Fighting Irish and the Nittany Lions will battle the winner of Oregon and Marquette. That game will take place tomorrow over on ESPNU at 4.30. Of course, the final four of the NIT happens at world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. Good motivation for both programs to try to get their build for the future. And on St. Patty's Day in South Bend, where else would you rather be? A great environment. Fans have turned out this Saturday afternoon supporting the home team. In green, no less. You gotta do it. Nice packed house, the fans have showed up. Expect to see more of the same tomorrow. And the women go for the Sweet 16. Should said he traded his sister for a leprechaun. Really, that's what we're doing these days? <laughs> Take the necklaces, the glasses, all. Oh, I see his t-shirt now, okay. He's got the beads, he's got the shirt. Maybe his sister didn't bring him good luck. <laughs> Savage, I love it. Oh my God. Now who bought him the t-shirt? That's what I want to know. That's, we got to get to the root. A five-point lead. There's his sister right there, I bet. <laughs> so I'm doing my own thing. Well, no luck of the Irish in this first half as Penn State has made an early statement in this one. Nittany Lions just seven points in this second quarter. Carr with nine thus far. Open look, top of the key. Colson with a desperation he no whistle. He wanted the foul. Mike Bray did wow. too. He's on the floor. And Mike Bray came charging out. Not happy with that call at all. Wow. Well, certainly from this angle he gets contact. Let's see. Well, there's contact. There's enough to call the foul. It wasn't there. Mike Bray fuming about it. He gets off the bench, and I think he had a case. 28 to 23, Penn State shooting just 30%, but with the advantage as we send you to Matt Schick and Dallin Cup back in the studio for the halftime report. And welcome back to the second round action of the NIT Penn State. Five point lead to begin our third quarter against Notre Dame on the road. Here on St. Patty's Day, star shining brightly, Bonzi Colson. Seven points in the first half, Carr matching him bucket for bucket with nine in our first two quarters. Brooke Weisbro, Roy Philpott, great to have you courtside for what amounted to be a rock fight in those first 20 minutes. Rock fight part two exists, but you know, Notre Dame did a good job of getting better and getting more decisive in their attacks toward the basket. One thing I noticed about the Irish, just three assists for them in that first half. So the ball movement not there. Meanwhile, Penn State getting inside, scoring in the paint, kind of keeping Notre Dame off the boards a bit in that first half. And you know, we saw two teams that struggled to shoot it. 
25% for the Irish, 30% for Penn State. But they did get to the free throw line. Just waiting for this game to break open at any moment. UMBC scored, I believe, 21 points in the first half last night in its upset against Virginia. 53 in the second to go up under 70 for the first time against the Cavs this year. Maybe we've got an offensive game about ready to break out. They could do that. The UConn ladies can put up 90 plus in one half. We could be in for a show. Expect the unexpected. Penn State opening possession of our third quarter. Garner off the mark and Colson the board. Notre Dame shooting just 25% frigid in those first two quarters. Tend to shoot for Pfluger. And two personals early set on the bench. Majority of the second quarter. Colson, a little drop step off the glass. Nicely done. Good patience from Colson. Good start off by the Irish. Get the ball into it. Mike Bray trying to get his guys charged up. Once more defensive effort. Late whistle. Free throws upcoming for Reeves. Well, Pitt State won a couple of games in the Big Ten tournament inside of Madison Square Garden about two weeks ago. Has proven to be a difficult out with Tony Carr this year. 22 games. The Lions have won. This team with something to prove on the road. It's an ACC squad that was in the top ten this year, bro. And things to look ahead to for next season. Patrick Chambers telling us, hey, we're young. You know, this is a team that's returned all five starters. You got one senior in Shep Garner, three juniors, five sophomore, sophomores and four freshmen. So if they can work together well over the summer, get some extra time in the gym, these guys come back stronger next season. Ten is dominated Purdue. Ohio State looks strong. Of course, Michigan, the run that they made. Penn State wants a piece of that action. By the way, terrible news, too. I feel bad about Isaac Haas at Purdue with his dislocated elbow. That's a tough way to end the season. Such a talented player, too, for the Boilermakers. A team with all that size losing that kind of star power. In the dance, not easy to bounce back from. Gibbs. Too strong in the rebound by Stevens. Well, Penn State's given gives a lot of room. And they're backing off of him, daring him to shoot from the outside. You can see he's hesitating between taking those mid-range jumpers and trying to get to the rim. He's such a decisive driver. I like him using his action. Dunk it, take it right to the defense. Wide open. Stevens for three. Fluger the rebound. Ahead to Gibbs. One on one. And gets the finish. Just like that. That's his game. A play like that could certainly spark more from T.J. Gibbs. Emotional player, emotional team. Gibbs came up. He still bothered something. His left hand or his left shoulder. He's got that bandage on there. Offensive foul. And that's the call this crowd's been waiting for for almost two and a half quarters. Threes equal long rebounds and the miss from Penn State. Great heads up play and a pass. That leads to the open floor bucket from Gibbs. And watch at the end of this play, he'll come down hard. Lands somewhat awkwardly. You see the bandage on his left shoulder. And as he runs back down the floor, he's shaking that hand out. See if it affects him down the stretch. Colson collects, then lost the handle. Stolen by Moore. Carr, the quick trigger. Tapped out. It'll stay with Penn State. You see, something's going on. It's Trying to get feeling back into his hand. An awkward fall. You wonder what bothered him on that play, whether it was his bandage on his shoulder or something that maybe radiated down to his hands. Injuries have plagued this Notre Dame team this year. A car in the painted area, now in double figures with 11. Max Fluger's been dealing with a lower back injury this season. We mentioned the injury to Bonzi Colson. Starters have missed significant time due to various ailments. Go, 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 go. 
Farrell. One for seven in that win against Hampton from downtown, and as far 0 for four from three-point range today. And remember the three-point line moved back a bit to international distance. There's NIT rules in that Farrell coming up a bit short on almost all of his misses. I mean, to me, that's the biggest change. But when you talk to coaches and players, a lot of them tell you, well, the shot clock resets to 20 seconds after an offensive rebound or the wider lane creates more movement, more freedom down low. You're back in that three-point arc to the international level, the FIBA rules. You know, that makes a difference on your three-point shot. It's a bit psychological. And at the same time, how many times have you seen Farrell pull up from 25 feet away and knock it down? So it's about towing up to the line, getting a little more legs underneath your shot, following through nice and strong. This time of year, too, your legs are kind of weak. You gotta find that extra effort. Screen for Carr. Splits split. the double team. Garner thinking about it. And the double clutch triple is good. Garner on the fall away triple. He shot that from his heels. Two big threes against Temple in the comeback win in the first round. And State lead is pushed back to eight. This is the guy who's got to get going, Farrell. Six to shoot. Spots Colson. Nice finish inside. To me, that's the strongest element of Notre Dame's offense. The two-man game with the pick and roll. You want to use Colson, Gavin. Two best assets, the two biggest guys who move well. Farrell might want to drop that play for more time. Get them in a rhythm. We talk about kills defensively, three stops in a row. How about offensively? Meanwhile, Penn State behind Carr, grinding it out once again. Let's go back to that long three from Chef Garner. Shot clock somewhat winding down. He's got no problems with the international rules. And Colson off the pass from Farrell. Great over the top, good concentration. Finish over Julian Moore at 6'10. Colson with 11. Carr with 11 and a chance to make it 12 or 13 at the line. Talk to me about Tony Carr's NBA prospects because he said he has a decision to make. I've seen some mock drafts out there that have him perhaps as a first or second rounder. And of course, there's a big difference between those two. You're talking about guaranteed money and stay perfect at the line. Is he ready in your estimation? I think you want to ask for that feedback from the guys who make that decision. Because if you ask any college kid who's getting NBA attention, of course he's going to say he's ready. I'm going. Why wouldn't you? I'm going. And, and for him to make that decision, you want to have honest feedback to say, hey, what are my chances right now? What do I need to improve on? Do you think an extra year of school is going to help that? Or can you work on that? and also get a contract. It is possible. Halfway through our third quarter, the home of the Golden Domers in South ESPN's Bend. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by BMW. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Well, it's only appropriate on St. Patty's Day. The Bioblast on the Leprechaun. Yeah, that's right. Tryouts take place every single spring. Official mascot was named way back in 65. First appeared in 1960. And Brooke, you probably didn't know, but he replaced the Irish Terrier as the official mascot. A little Bioblast for you. I didn't, but I like that tryouts are, are coming up in the spring now. I have talked to the mascot about tomorrow. You know, we'll be here for the women's game. I think I'd like to learn the Irish jig before tomorrow. Good luck with that. We're all counting on Let me try. I could be the mascot here. I could. That, I that's in my could. wheelhouse. Colson. Got the beard. Down low and a chance for three. Bonzi Colson not wanting to go out. It would be his final home game with a loss. A strong finish down low. Colson, good jab step. Lulling the defense to sleep. And this is where his strength really comes into play. You know, being back in, feeling healthy off that foot. He broke the fifth metatarsal in his foot, so a lot of that has to do with the elevation. And then having that bounce back in his step, you can really see the difference in his game. Still a six-point lead, though, for the Nittany Lions. They have been consistent. The 
Coach got to go about making this game choppy, getting inside the paint. Chambers calls it a rock bite. That's what it's been for the second time in this tournament. And a foul inside against Notre Dame. They'll catch every moment of the 2018 NCAA Women's Championships on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, visit NCAA.com, home for all 90 NCAA championships. Six-point advantage. Notre Dame has never led in this contest. Despite this raucous crowd. Luger is scoreless with three fouls. Tentative take on the that. shot. Yeah, yeah, take that. 17 on the shot clock. More than halfway through our third quarter. And to me, it feels like Farrell has not hesitated. Colton hasn't hesitated at times. Gibbs there, too. You need that team effort. You need everybody in. You're in your green uniforms. You got the green light. Want to score some buckets. Just 31 points here. Halfway, more than halfway through this third quarter. Irish offense has been stale today. On St. Patty's Day, don't yeah. last. Really doesn't add up. No. Another turnover. Ninth for Notre Dame. Farrell just four points, two of seven from the floor for Mike Gray's club. Mentioned it earlier, their energetic practice yesterday. Told us, we want to practice some more, guys. We want to practice more. He's like, yeah, we don't want to lose tomorrow. So we get back to work. I think that's the first time I've ever heard a coach say, hey, guys, we don't want this to be our last practice. Everybody jumping in. Yes, we are talking about practice, not a game. Top of the key, counted for Reeves. He was the big scorer against Temple. The second double-double came at a good time of the season. Good hands. Oh! Ooh, little show time. The look off. Well, Penn State feeling in control now. Mike Ray's going to want to talk this one over. Absolutely. This will tie the largest lead of the afternoon. Mike Ray has seen enough. And a chance to talk things over. Meanwhile, Penn State having its way really on both ends of the floor. Reeves leading the charge here in our third. Yeah, the Irish are not putting a whole lot of zip behind their passes. They're not being purposeful, and at the same time, they're telegraphing them. So they're making it easy for Penn State to get in the lanes and be disruptive. And they're turning those turnovers into points quickly, extending this lead. In front of more than 4,000. Kim Garner liking what she's seeing thus far from her Nittany Lions. She's letting the crowd know about it. Yeah, she's great. That is a performer performer at her best. She loves traveling, making the game. She said even we go on to play behind here. Dad, Dad's got to play it cool. He's going to keep a reserved role. You can only imagine what's going on on the inside. I would be more like mom. I would be creating a scene. <laughs> you would be. I got no problem doing that for the kids. I remember my mom would just kind of sit there with her, her fists clenched able to talk. I mean, she was leading cheers in that yeah. first round win against Temple. She, she got, got the, the crowd ready to go. The fans in it. No doubt that had an impact. All right, if you're Notre Dame, what are you looking to do now? you got to go off the, the screen and roll. That's the offense that I think works best. You see how much more movement now. And you to put some pace behind the passes. It appears to be okay after what Looked to be a left extremity injury moments ago. Fluger spins it on. That's the take you want to see from Fluger. He passed up a three-point shot okay, but make it up. Do something aggressive. Kickball, Kick it'll stay with Penn State. One of the rules we haven't talked about as much when the shot clock resets to 20 seconds after an offensive rebound pause in the action. Do you like that? Because it seems, I guess in theory, would give you more possessions in a game. I think you have to you just have to be aware, right? Because if you feel like there's less time, you're going to go through your offense rushed. But if you've got the heads-up play like Penn State has today, there's Garner for more threes. Gives you time to reset in your offense and get a better look. So it's, it's really more about being aware of the situation and then knowing how to operate from there. Cole said the response, and that's one of the questions as it pertains to the NBA. Does he have the outside shot? And the answer, we believe, is yes. Yeah, I think he does. Under 
Two to go in the third. Lead is nine. Penn State has never trailed. Garner's had the hot hand. Chef Garner rejected. Fluger got there from behind for to shoot. Kevin checks in. Joko out for Notre Dame. Julian Moore to the bench. Mooney in for the Fighting Irish. So mass substitutions on both sides. Four on the shot clock. Here's Stevens. Count it. Penn State will not get rattled under pressure. They have played composed this entire game. Notre Dame's defense, I still think, a degree under what Mike Bray wants to see. Mooney can't connect. Rebound by Reeves. Penn State surging now here at the end of the third. Come back to Matt Farrell. It's been ice cold in the NIT. A couple of good passes looking for a great shot. It's not there. Too unselfish. Somebody's got to take the lead here. Who wants it? It's going to be Farrell. Still unable to get on track. What about some credit for Penn State. This job that they've done on the road. Hostile environment. Nearly 5,000 on hand. Look depleted to me. This possession, a little flat. Carr's got to hurry from the corner. It'll stay with Penn State for what could be the final possession of the third. Mike Gray talking to Bonzi Colson. He's got to be asking him for more in this fourth quarter. He's got to be big, and he's over there. I'll tell you what, he's over there grabbing his left foot. And I hope there's nothing wrong. And at the same time, Notre Dame looking for their alpha out here offensively, being very unselfish. Remember, too, that was the foot that experienced, suffered from the fracture, caused him to miss almost eight weeks and 15 games. Shot clock is off. Outside, Garner wide open. From the corner, count it! Chef Garner making big shot after big shot for Penn State. 50 to 36 through three complete. And coming up next, the Leprechaun's going to teach Brooke, our old Brooke Weisbrook, the Iris jig. Yeah, stay tuned, you're going to want to see this. Penn State on the road dominating Notre Dame, the four seed over the one in Brooke moments ago, learning the Irish jig. How did that work out for you? Uh, you know, I kind of got it down. I had about 30 seconds to learn it. I had a great teacher. Nice shoes to work with today. Glad that I didn't have the heels on. And then he wanted me to really get into it with the straight leg kicks. No, we're, we're not going to do much. all that. That's a lot. And just like Bonzi Colson said, talking about acting, so what's harder, learning plays or learning lines? He said, oh, learning lines. Very difficult. And that is the two-man exchange I'm talking about. Farrell to Gevin. Now, the Nittany Lions getting a lot of sleep last night. Pat Chambers telling us that probably slept an hour or two just trying to get some rest for this game, getting ready for Notre Dame. And all the prep work that has been put in has paid off an impressive performance here on the road and a chance to make the quarterfinals of the NIT. Winner of this one gets the winner of Oregon and Marquette. Tony Carr quietly getting the job done with 13. Reeves with 13. Fluger down low. The wraparound, and he connects. She's in the lead, 10. Where the Irish have gotten right to the rim. Releasing some of that pressure, Penn State creeping out further and further on their defense. And good recognition by the Irish. Jab step getting behind. Also of note, Colson not on the floor to start the fourth quarter and not on the Notre Dame bench. Stevens off the mark, put back too strong. 
18 to shoot for Penn State. Well, the hustle, the determination, the grit down low has been evident tonight for the Nittany Lions. Yeah, they have just been relentless. You know, it hasn't been a pretty game for the Nittany Lions, but they have been willing to stay in the fight. A rock fight at that, but they've been willing to be in it. Gonna work to get an update on Bonzi Colson. State by 10. Nittany Lions have never trailed on the road. Carr. In and out. Farrell wants it, takes it. Still ice cold. Gibbs. Cut it. 15 to 43. And Pat Chambers has seen it up. Well, it took three quarters for the Irish to come alive here, four quarters at that, but here they are, finally playing with some pace and some life and taking shots rather than passing them up. There have been too many possessions today where the Irish have been too unselfish. And now Bonzi Colson out getting evaluated. You gotta have other guys step up. That time from TJ Gibbs with the big three. Temple Dupree Gibbs Jr., his father, Temple, yes. played football at Temple. And a big shot to try to extend Notre Dame's season. Still plenty of time left, obviously, with over eight to go. Great crowd, great environment. Two good teams getting after it so far. Oregon Marquette. That game will be played tomorrow afternoon, 4.30. Winner of this one will get the winner of that one. Out of the timeout, here comes Penn State. And just being informed, Bonzi Colson out for the rest of this contest. It's a big loss for the Irish, certainly hope. Whatever's going on with this foot, you see that he's got the ice there on it, but they'll have to do it without him. Seven turnovers for Penn State. Colson clearly not at 100%. The Irish is going to be next man up. And Farrell loses the ball. Reeves snuck a fingertip in there. And will shoot two on the other end. Well, what a great job and a great afternoon for Josh Reeves. 13 points, six boards, a couple of steals. The junior out of Fairfax, Virginia. Led the Big Ten in steals this year with almost 70. Get the quick hands, the quick trigger. Yeah, he's been big at times when they've needed him most. And Tony Carr, who did not shoot well in their first round game against Temple, Josh Reeves picked him up, 19 points. That was a season high. Also had 11 rebounds in other big games. He had the game-winning dunk against Ohio State. So you talk about glue, somebody else stepping up when your big guy isn't scoring. That has been Josh Reeves in the postseason. Game-winning dunk against Ohio State minutes into our fourth quarter and a couple of big free throws there to eliminate a 7-0 run by the Fighting Irish. Backdoor cut, Farrell. Will that get him going? It's the third time they've gone back to that play. And you go back to it three more times. Until Penn State learns how to stop the backdoor cut, Notre Dame has got to utilize it and keep getting there. To the rim, Farrell, the great jab step that leads to a layup. Carr, the elbow jumper, silky smooth. Four and Notre Dame not done yet, but they are done with Bonzi Colson. Here he is out for the rest of the game on the foot injury, perhaps on this play right here. And 54 45 Penn State with the lead in the fourth quarter, and you see Bonzi Colson on the bench. 
We'll take another look at where he may have re-injured his foot. He check it out, his left foot here. He comes up hobbling, grimacing, and came out of the locker room with the ice. He will be on the bench for the rest of the game, and the Irish will have to figure it out without him. And meanwhile, Penn State getting stronger by the possession. Fifth all-time meeting between these two teams. Penn State leads the series 3-1. to one. The Lions have never trailed in this game. Kevin off the mark. Penn State can hold on moving forward. You look ahead to winner of this one getting the winner of Oregon and Marquette and down low a chance for three. A strong statement it would be for Pat Chambers and this team to make a nice run in postseason play. Behind the defense and, and you really feel the personality of this Notre Dame team. And without their, their tough guy, their superhero, Bonzi Colson in the game, and I think Penn State senses that. And they have done a great job of getting stronger in the postseason. A good showing in the Big Ten tournament. And it's been a team effort. This is, you know, Tony Carr averages 19 points, but you've got four guys who average double, score, double figures. More, more difficult to guard against balance. Penn State achieving that balance offensively for Nittany Lions in double figures. Led by Carr and Reeves, both with 15 apiece. Pfluger left open. Gevin, the offensive rebound. That possession of microcosm of this game. Good yeah. defense by Penn State. Notre Dame can't connect. It's rare you see teams be too unselfish, but I think that's what we're witnessing today with Notre Dame and their offense. And at this point in the game, Matt Farrell's going to have to take over and create shots for his guys or take them himself. Car double team. Back to the basket, a little shimmy, little shake, no whistle. And there to clean it up is Josh Reeves. Car. Saying he wanted the foul there. Nittany Lions still able to collect and score. Lead is 14. He's off the pick and pop. I like it, but not enough action to the basket. They've done a good job getting behind the defense. There it is. A good take. But where are the green uniforms crashing the glass? Penn State has controlled the rebounds in this game. Weekend that has started with upsets galore in the NCAA tournament. Penn State trying to pull off an upset of sorts on the road against Notre Dame. And the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One continues today, 3.30 Eastern, ESPN2. Make sure you check your local listings for the game in your area. Remember that all games are streaming live on the ESPN app. UConn a dominating performance in its first NCAA tournament game, as expected. Kevin, open path, and will shoot two despite the best efforts of Josh Reeves to convince the officiating crew otherwise. And good luck with that. Never worked out in my favor either. But this may be a, a stretch where you see Notre Dame trying to get to the free throw line since they haven't really been able to find a consistent offense anywhere else. And the Irish 35% from two, 13% from three. I think to me most telling but they're only at 10 assists. One more coming for Marty Kevin. Austin Torres getting set to check in. The NIT always wonder who wants it more, who wants to be here, and by all indication, both programs are anticipating this game. We're excited to play, but Penn State's just taking it to them. Mike Bray sharing a moment with us yesterday in the middle of the season when everything was going wrong. One injury after the next, the Irish losing some games. You know, some fans could hear him talking about the NIT, and he said, hey, we'd be lucky to get to the NIT at this point. More aggressive play for Penn State. There's a three-pointer for Farrell. And he'll cut the lead to 11, under five to play. He's got to get intense. You know, he plays with so much passion. You haven't 
seen him be very emotional today. I think that's the Irish are waiting to see somebody emotional kind of rise up, get this crowd into it. Penn State has control. Everybody in this building on the start. We go back to the rule changes. Three-point arc extended outwards. Match the FIBA rules. Matt Farrell in those two games now combined two for 14 from distance in NIT. Win against Hampton in this game against Penn State. Not saying that's the only reason, but certainly plays a factor. Well, here's Carr. Against Gibbs. Count it. Silky smooth baseline jumper. <laughs> and the message to the official on his way back. He did take some contact, able to finish the play. Great shot and elevation from Carr. He's been verbal, shall we say. Garner hit the deck. The foul on Gibbs. Garner. Shoe came off. And Gray's at half court. He just got teed up. Trainers out to 10 to Garner. Technical foul called against Mike Bray. He was out near half court. Yeah. That's Kim Garner, Shep's mom. Making concern for her son, waiting for him to get up. He came down, his shoe came off, and they will help him off the floor. He's able to put a bit of weight on it. You can see getting some assistance. The pass by Farrell, the collision. And you can see his ankle turn inside after he plants. Mike Gray furious with the call, charging the half court, getting the technical. What a postseason run it has been for Shep Gardner. Poured in 33 in the semis against Purdue in the Big Ten tournament. Mentioned the two big threes he hit against Temple in the comeback win. Played all 40 minutes of that game. He's been a workhorse for Pat Chambers. Led the Big Ten this year with 103 threes made. Hopefully he's going to be okay as Carr approaches the line. Jeff Senior looking on. Common foul on TJ Gibbs and confirmation of the technical foul against Mike Gray. You gotta wonder, is this the kind of play? Three minutes, 45 seconds left. Could it inspire his team to make one last run or is this a game where Penn State is gonna stay in charge? No indication of that run coming just yet. Penn State is really there have been no signs of it, right? Right. Yeah, they've flexed their muscle for four straight quarters. Almost in their entirety. In your case, you're keeping track at home. Penn State just missed its first free throw of the afternoon. Now 14 of 15 at the line. And an offensive foul against the Nittany Lions. That'll go against Wheeler. That's his fourth. play some basketball here in these last three and a half minutes. Great cut, great look. 64-52, Torres the finish. Here comes full court pressure. And a foul called against Penn State. Julian Moore picks up his third. What will Notre Dame go back to here offensively? You gotta think. Look for a cutting Torres again to the basket. Fluger, he could get hot at any moment, hit some threes. For Penn State, you know, stay strong defensively. Do not allow the big play to happen. That's what you're looking to eliminate now. That's your version of the kill if you're the Nittany Lions. Don't let the big play open this game up and give the Irish a chance to get back in it. Off the turnover. Defense, 
Farrell rejected. Outstanding defense by Julian Moore. Wow, great job by Moore. Staying with the play. Good timing. He felt that one from Farrell. He's starting to get into this game. You feel it, the toughness coming out. And you're right, Roy. Who wants it more? Who wants to get to New York City? Torres open again. The easy bucket. Under three to play. Another turnover, and Penn State gets it back. Oh, Gibbs is trying to get a fingertip on it. Couldn't quite corral it. The lead is 10, 2.52 to go. Joy Center, South Bend, Indiana, all Penn State on the road. Three to play here in our fourth quarter. Brooke Weisbrook, Roy Philpott, and the Irish jig being taught moments ago. And apparently you've got a track record of doing this. <laughs> That's right. This was Halloween back in the day, about 1991-ish. And I thought, why not? You know, we, we had all the opportunity in the world. You got the bag, the shoes, the boxer shorts, the, the tie, the hat, oh my. and the beard. Oh, my. That's right. My, my stepdad was an actor and just happened to have some props laying around the house. I'm like, let's go all the way. Let's do this. You know my bag was full of candy by the end of the night. I do know that, right? yes. Better costume than a better dresser than a dancer. Maybe. Meanwhile, my house is yelling at me because I didn't wear green today <laughs> for St. Patty's Day. Carr, one more coming. What a performance for Tony Carr. I got something to work on for tomorrow. I got to get that leg kick. You're expending energy doing that. We got games to call. You got to save that. We got to work out. I didn't go to the gym today. I know you haven't been for the last two days. You got to do something. Movement, my too. friends. Yeah, Stay mean, sharp. Meanwhile, Penn State never trail. The season that has seen the Nittany Lions sweep Ohio State. Three wins against the Buckeyes. All coming with Ohio State ranked inside the top 15. Patrick Chambers in his seventh season. Well, he's done a nice job in building a foundation for the future. And this win would be another nice step in a positive direction. And don't forget tonight after boxing here on ESPN. Stay tuned for SportsCenter. John and Kenny will give you all the updates from Portland. Damian Lillard continues his strong play, plus the Cavs. Wrapping up a six-game road trip and the most impressive first weekend performances in the NCAA tournament tonight at 11 Eastern on ESPN, also the ESPN app. Go ahead and pencil in UMBC. Top that list. Everybody was talking about today, this morning, on social media, on SportsCenter. Pretty incredible to have the first 16-1 upset in the men's tournament. Of course, Harvard did that back in the day on the women's side of things, but what a night. Nobody was giving UMBC a shot. The Retrievers. Had no chance. And they took it to Virginia. And by 20 points, it wasn't just some last-second shot. They were like, no, we got you the whole game. Start, start strong finish. Can Farrell do the same for the Irish? Answer so far has been no. 20 to shoot, 220 remaining. Game that's been dominated by Penn State. It's been a collective effort. Carr leading the way with 21 points. Reeves with 17. Evan down low. Jeff Garner has checked back in. Stevens couldn't finish. An opportunity. Gibbs needs it. If you're Penn State, you don't want to play, trying hard not to lose here. You still got to play this game to win. Stay aggressive in your offense. For Notre Dame, do you have that effort? Do you have the fight left in you to give this one more go? A minute and a half left. Contact, no whistle, Carr. And this is the guy you want with possession of the ball right no here. No doubt. Game time, Tony Carr. On the way for three. He just lulled Farrell to sleep, had something to say after the shot. A big time three from Tony Carr. Just one of 12 in their first round game, came to play tonight. 24 points to lead all scorers. Gibbs will shoot two and Tony Carr 
Rookie's got a decision to make on the NBA. Well, the scout's going to like this. You felt Farrell feeling the drive. And instead, you give him that kind of space, you leave your hands down. Tony Carr is going to make you pay. He shoots 45% from three, Roy. Got to know that on the scouting report. Ravens always make it look effortless. Carr has done that and then some this afternoon. Gibbs with 13, make it 14. Second leading scorer in the Big Ten. The sophomore has already poured in 1,000 points in his career. If you're a fan of the Nittany Lions, you wish the best for him. You kind of want him back next season, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a torn decision. We love having him on the team and everything that he adds. And if he's got a chance to change the course of, of his career and his family's life, he should do it. Lead is nine. Fluger couldn't get there. And Reeves is fouled. Now the new rules, remember, after you go over, you get to five team fouls in a quarter, it's two shots. No one and one with the experimental rules here in the NIT. And Reeves, perfect at the line. Of this one gets the winner of Oregon and Marquette, a game that will be played tomorrow. Two versus three. And for Penn State, either way, they're going to be on the road again. And they have they have learned how to be soldiers on the road, coming into a place that's not easy to win. The teams don't typically come in here and dominate from start to finish. Penn State, who has led this entire game, has done just that. Jogo too strong. Garner the rebound, triple team, finally a whistle. Shep Garner hit the deck hard 10 minutes ago. Lost his shoe, was helped off the floor, now back on it. Good looking player. Yeah, good to see him have some bounce back in his step now in the game, which you know, after what looked like a pretty nasty collision coming down the inside of his foot and his ankle, that's his mom Kim. And the biggest fan on this team, still the only one standing. Love it. She's full of life. Mom had to get on a 5 a.m. flight today to get here in time. Professional singer had a performance last night. She told me she had to cut her set short from five songs to three. She said, I got to save my voice for tomorrow. My son needs me. Under a minute to play, Farrell, desperation. Mooney chases it down. And Gibbs connects with a quick timeout called by Mike Bray. Now Notre Dame faced now with the reality of this season coming to a close. A senior class that has won more games than any other senior class in Notre Dame history. And that's saying a lot, 103 victories and Bonzi Colson has missed this fourth quarter. You know it pains him not to be on the court with his brothers. Now yeah, he wears his emotions on his sleeve, and you could read it in his face, you know, how disappointing it is for him not to be out there fighting with his guys at the end. You certainly hope the best for you know, whatever happens with his foot. He's got both shoes on right now and a lot of work to do to get to that next level. And he sounded really excited to us. I like that. He was excited about the work he's going to put in even after this season ends. And for his team, getting in the gym stronger, learning what he needs to do better to be a pro. A reminder, send you out to Indian Wells, California. Perry Bay open. You can see it now on ESPN News if you're tuning in. 36 seconds remaining here. And for Penn State, what a performance. Looking for a team that gets hot from three-point range, a team that can defend, a team that's hungry. Penn State will check all those categories. One of the biggest telltale signs of this game, 12 turnovers from Notre Dame have turned into 19 points for Penn State. Notre Dame isn't a team that turns the ball over. They typically have just under 10 a game, so a little over their average, but Penn State has made them pay, and that to me is the difference. See Bonzi Colson. 
will be his final game in Notre Dame uniform. And you think this one doesn't mean something. Understand how painful that would be for a senior. And been in that moment, great moment between Bray Gibbs. This guy's a battle. Bonzi unable to control his emotions, and rightly so. He wants to check in. All right. He's going to come on the floor. got that last feeling of your last game, college career. You're excited for what's next, but you think back on all the amazing memories that you've had. And the all-time winning as senior class will not have a chance to advance. 103 wins for this Irish crew. Penn State, an amazing job today, coming into a tough environment, leading from start to finish. What a win for Penn State. Gritty performance on the road. Pencil in the Nittany Lions, awaiting the winner of Oregon and Marquette. And it'll be played tomorrow, 4.30, over on ESPNU. Victory number 23 for Penn State. A wire-to-wire -wire win, 73-63, the final score. Nittany Lions, a seven seed in the Big Ten tournament, made it to the semis, a four seed in the NIT and playing at a high level. Well, coming up, the 2018 Harry Bay Open. So long from here in South Bend as we send you to Indian Wells.